speed on my end, camera speed. Are we rocking and rolling? Do you have audio on your end? Oh yeah, girl. It says record, your camera's oh, yeah, rolling. Girl. Oh yeah. Okay, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of The Sip. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by... Elizabeth Gordon. Hello, hello everybody and welcome to this fucking shit show of a podcast. We are having a rough day because guess what? We fucking care about the quality of this podcast and we're so grateful you tune in every week to listen to us talk about my anal fissure. <laughs> gosh i'm ready to quit the show i'm ready to throw in the towel on almost everything at this point and it's like it's my own fault because i'm having too much fun i'm running too fast i can't keep up with everything that's underneath me i think i just need to take a deep breath yeah and know that everything will be fine i am i swear to god dude i'm right there with you and when i was getting ready like because i've been on the kitchen floor literally well, for we have a week. The internet hasn't caught up with you since that's been your reality. So you're going to have to bring us up to speed. Quick backstory. Last uh, Sunday night, Icky exhibited some bizarre physical symptoms. His legs went rigid behind him, and it seemed like he was compulsively out of control of something in his hind legs. Mm. Um, with the French Bulldog breed, that can be a devastating injury that you need to be hyper vigilant about caring for immediately. Um, they just are, you know, one of the Frenchie curses is um, spinal injuries. so And they can sustain them in any way. Like, he, he he jumps off the couch wrong. So that's why we have ramps all over our houses. Uh, all over our house. We have but one. Um, anyway, we rushed him to the, to the dog hospital. And sure enough, he has an acute or a, a minor uh, injury to his spine that requires four to six weeks of bed rest. Mm -hmm. And if we don't um, and bed rest means literal fucking bed rest. This guy can't jump up on anything. He can't get in and out of bed. I have to carry him to and from the bathroom. And the problem is he's not in any pain, which is also a blessing. But that means that he doesn't understand why he has to hold still. And he's barely over a year old. So he wants to be a wild man. So in order to keep him calm, I have turned our kitchen into what I call the slumby room <laughs> and I've put a slumby pad in there and I've just been laying on the floor to keep him on the floor from being too excited and I will be there for the next three weeks in addition to that and uh I, but but the point is I feel you dude like it's really hard in the summertime specifically to like want to push through the rest of the year like I'm like laying on the floor and they're trying to film a get ready with me and I'm just like do I just quit everything <laughs> You're like texting me up the ass. I'm like, this is uh, this is the first time in 14 days I've, been, I've managed to create some content, man. Like, I just got to film this. Like, I'm pretty sure my coochie's in the whole thing. Like, I'm on the floor. My kitchen's fucking disgusting. That one guy, Clanger, is going to say some shit about it. And I don't fucking care. Like, I, my, I can feel my, my own spine fucking deviating from itself. Like, I'm going to need the $20,000 surgery by the end of this three-week period. I will say, your issue is a lot more prominent than my issue. Issue. My issue is I'm just running at a million miles an hour and trying to sustain quality in the things I put out on the internet. Like I'm living too hard and having too much fun, which is the problem. <laughs> With Icky, it's what? Like if he isn't on bed rest, what is the bigger injury that we're trying to prevent here? So we're trying to prevent a herniated disc in his spine. Um, any spinal cord injury that goes untreated for too long can turn into neurological damage, which is a nightmare. And 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 any severe spinal injury can lead to paralyzation. Mm -hmm. um, and if he ha if he gets a even to discover if he has a slip disc, it's four thousand dollars for an MRI. And then the surgery to repair a slip disc is between ten and fifteen thousand dollars. And even after that surgery is performed, there is always the chance that the spine and the bones don't heal correctly. And then you have a paralyzed mm. dog. So we are taking this very, very seriously. I you know me. I take everything well, seriously you've with them. Like been literally on the floor with that dog every moment of every day. <laughs> like I just get another picture of her on the floor with the dog. And when, like, God bless you and God bless that you're able to do that. Because if you had a job that was out of the house, Can it you would imagine. Be... No, I literally can't. No. I have a girlfriend who works for the fire department in NorCal and this happened to her dog and she had to just keep him in a crate by her desk. But her dog was crate trained. Mine's not. I put Icky in the crate and he started screaming bloody murder. <laughs> So this is partially on me because I let him be a wild man, but it's like I let him be a wild man because he has one life. Let him live. Mm. Oh no. Oh, you were starting My to give me vertigo, slowly spinning into My nothing. My phone just slipped. <laughs>
And so what's your health update? My health update is I don't have skin cancer and I'm just perpetually gaslit by the doctors about what's wrong with my eye bumps. This eye bump has moved and is now here, and which so, is interesting. Are you fine? <laughs> Uh yeah, the the doctor at Kaiser was like, yeah, go forth and procreate, bitch. And I'm pretty sure. Well, she's just like, I'm pretty sure it's your eye socket. And I'm like, well, I know it's not, but this one vanished, so this one dissipated and is gone. So I'm not worried about oh, it anymore. Okay. Yeah. That's nice. So she, she's like, as long as it's going away for you. But the way she was talking to me was like, do you see the rabbit in the room right now? What the and fuck like, does that mean? I'm too stupid a- to even understand that. <laughs> It might be a deep cut. It's a reference to a play and a movie called Harvey, where a grown man sees a okay, six bored. foot rabbit. Okay. Uh, and is this all through Kaiser now, now that you're a Kaiser girly? Yeah, girl. It's all through Kaiser. I got to give Kaiser some props. I didn't know that it was available to just jump on a virtual call with a doctor at any time for free. Oh, I've yeah. been paying the like doctor on demand, like 125 every time I have a problem. And oh, I had like my first ever like super health scare where I was like, wow, I'm just so thankful for my health and my, and I know that's like, I always am like, when I go through my gratitude list, my health is at the top of my priorities. But when you have like a little jump scare, it like, it really solidifies how short life really is. I was, what was your jump scare? I was sitting on this couch behind me meditating like three mornings ago. And like intuitively, I just like lifted my hand over my, my head, just like a morning stretch, like didn't even think about it. I had the sharpest pain run from my upper abdomen to my shoulder for like three minutes. I stood up. I thought I was having a heart attack. I don't know what having a heart attack is or the symptoms of a heart attack. I don't know what they are, but I stood, I couldn't sit down because it was so much like a stabbing pain going from my upper abdomen through my heart to my uh, shoulder and I just stood there for like three minutes like trying to catch my breath because it was in so much pain and Riley's just like looking at me like what's going on what's going on what's going on and then for the entire day I had like a numb left shoulder and like Jesus like tingles through my arm the pain went away after three minutes and I didn't think too much about it I was like okay well like it would have been prolonging if it was something more than that but then when Shane woke up I told Shane about it and he's like I don't know I think you should go to a doctor and I was like we're in Colorado like I don't have my primary doctor here I don't know what you want me to do brother and he was like well if it's like something that was going through your heart and you're having like tingling in your shoulder you should probably get it figured out any doctor dude and so I like virtually uh message or like call get on a phone call within 10 minutes of Kaiser. And I was like, damn, I didn't know you could do that, daddy. Um, What was it? He is like, he was like 99.9% sure it isn't cardiac or heart related, that it was a nerve that I just like slept in a weird way. And I like pulled, he said, we have nerves running. I, it was much more doctor than I could uh, relate to you, but I guess. I mean, that's similar to what Icky's going through. It's a nerve thing. Yeah. There was a nerve running through my body and he was like, it isn't rare for if that nerve gets all out of whack that then you have like a little bit of like lingering pain in your shoulder but it was just I never in my life experienced a jolting pain that like made me stand and like be there for three minutes and not know what it is and it's it's just like very scary and we've got to be so thankful for like every day we our healthy bodies are working because there's so much shit in our bodies and it's a miracle that they're running as they should every single day. Well, that's why I believe in God. I'm like, even if we're down with the Big Bang Theory, like, what are the odds that all of these organisms have fucked together to make us? Mm. And how is, like, how is it that our bodies work like this every day? And not to be, like, so, I I don't even know if this is niche, but, like, I don't know if I've ever shared a YouTube video and I share, did you watch Brody's birth video that I sent you? Of course I watched Brody's birth video. And then I didn't know Lizzie was Brody's number one fan. He was, like, before she had watched it, I called her to review the, I guess he started a YouTube channel with his wife and this is their first episode and it goes through, like, their gender reveal, their baby shower, through the birth of their child. And I was just, like, damn birth and like bringing life to life is incredible it's like (laughs) it's so poetic and it's so crazy stunning yeah wow it's crazy i couldn't believe it and i couldn't believe that they just did that home birth like that and it was just like there's a baby there she is could you believe brody shade shaded caitlin like that Yes, I can, because all I've ever heard is Brody having a hard time and daddy issues because Bruce kind of just bailed. 
and was there for the Caitlin. Kardashian girls. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So are you pregnant or what? I mean, I'm manifesting it and <laughs> acting as if I am. <laughs> Poor Chris. I was texting him. I was like, sorry for being short with you. I just have a million things in my hand and I'm driving, so I can't really text and I'm pregnant. So and he was like, what? And I was like, no, we're just acting as if, Chris. We are living the life of a pregnant woman. I'm emotional well, like a pregnant woman. Am I allowed to I'm say sick? that you were ovulating? <laughs> No. Oh, she doesn't ovulate. Okay, never mind. You're the one screaming you're pregnant at everyone. It is rude. Yeah, how I, I mean, ju- you. Okay, do you want me to cut this? Uh, I don't want to give you more work to do. Man. Okay, well, you said there's probably a fucking ghost in my house. There is probably a fucking ghost in my house. I don't even know if I want to speak power to We've it. We've been cut through this, this once again, though. Is it the same shit? It's just recurring at this point? It's- so it's different. So I, as everybody knows now, I'm spending a lot of time on the kitchen floor and I was laying on the kitchen floor the other morning and I heard what sounds like a person behind me in the other room. Like, you know, floorboards creak when they're walked on. So I hear that and you get the app. Like, I'm scared even saying this. I don't even want to talk about it. You know how you have that feeling that somebody's in the room with you and you're not alone. Mm-hmm. Oh, like to the point where I'm like, I really don't want to talk about this, dude. Like, I'm actually about to start crying. You put it on the document. I know. I really And now you're know. acting like I'm putting you into a weird about. corner. I know. It's not you. It's not you. It's me. Okay. Well, now I'm, that you've started, you can't blue ball all of us. I know. I'm going to finish the story. But if I get home and the hauntings get worse because I've acknowledged them, it's my own damn fault. Um, and I, it's a great vlog. I hope you get so, the ghost on camera. And you, that's off. another thing. You need to start vlogging when things are going on in your life. Uh, I don't know that I could do that. Okay. Anyway, so I'm sitting there and I hear this noise and then Bub starts barking over my shoulder looking at something that's not fucking there. And I'm just like, what in the motherfuck? Like he's literally just looking over my shoulder going, rah, 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 and I'm like, oh, there is something there. <laughs> Did you turn around to look? Of course. And there was nothing. And Icky was so drugged out. He didn't even care. I know. I think Icky woke up from his slumber to bark with Bubs, but he'll do that all the time because he's just, you know, ride or die. Now I'm hearing things in my house and nobody's gone. I kicked Shane out because he left my camera in California. I said, you get out of this house so I can record in peace and quiet. You said leave. Yeah. Okay. Well, we haven't seen each other since the vacation of our lifetime. Oh my God. Maybe that's why we're such a mess. To be honest, <laughs> well- I'm like not okay if you don't know what we're talking about there's a vlog on my channel where we went to not only disneyland but we went to taylor swift that's coming up because it was just too much footage to put inside of one vlog it was already 34 minutes long and i'm becoming lizzie with my two and three parters at this point can you imagine if i gave you shit for that right now uh no i couldn't but the difference is your three parters were nine minutes each mine was 34 they were 12 (laughs) they were 12 minutes each one was 15 (laughs) Uh, but anyways, we had the time of our life. We went to Disneyland. We went to Taylor Swift. And I'm bringing all of this up because I was then, of course, stalking everything that had to do with the Eras tour. And then yeah. when I saw people on Instagram tagging the dancers, which on my third go around, I really um, came to terms with just how much of a performance the dancers are giving. It took me three times to realize these dancers were doing such incredible work alongside Taylor Swift. The first two Seriously. times I was so zoned in in on just my queen I couldn't see anything else but now I've become like a fanboy of all of her dancers and then when I was looking at each one of them individually we discovered that Lizzie's favorite is indeed following me on Instagram and Lizzie's screaming at me get him on the show get him on the show I'm like he's on a worldwide tour and I'm sure I'm not, and this doesn't even have like anything to do with Taylor. Just in general, there's no world in which he could come on a podcast and like give us the details of her tour. I bet he's signed the most insane NDA of his life to work alongside her. I think you can still ask. (laughs) I think there's no harm in asking like, hey man, do you want to come do my podcast? Please. What do you think he's going to give us? And then let him tell you no. Let him tell you no. He'd be so happy to hear from you. I don't know that that's true, A. And B, I just... He follows you. I know, but maybe he follows a lot of people. I didn't look too far into it. You think he just randomly is following I, Ryland Adams? I just screenshotted it and sent it to you because you were like edging I for him the ask. entire show. I think you should ask right now on And air the crazy the thing about you guys or you is that you were like toxically in love with all the male dancers who are so like noticeably gay. Yeah, we're, welcome to our relationship, Ryland. <laughs> Grow up. I love gay men. <laughs> Somebody has to. Um, okay, is that all you have to say about our week together? 
No, I really think you should pull out your phone right now and DM that guy. I can't. I'm FaceTiming you to make this virtual podcast oh, happen. Oh, that's right. We're both fucked Bummer. out of the phone. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> you rat fuck. Do you want to talk about how I have a career in party planning? I'm, oh, are we allowed to? Uh, well, you don't have to say for what. Although I did then make a video talk about? about how wonderful I am. <laughs> Rylan's a wonderful man who threw a secret party for a secret person. We never knew that thing. I could be the party planner. And we, now, but now we know, but we can't tell you how we found out. But all we know <laughs> is that I'm going to be a great party planner when my kids have birthdays. Like these birthday it's parties so are going to be so lit. And I found so like, stupid. no, I found a whole new sense of purpose in throwing parties. And it's so fun. I felt like accomplished after it all went off swimmingly. And who knows? It could already be out there by now. By the time this podcast goes live and then I'll be like, well, shit, I could have talked about it on the podcast. But I think it's respectful to not. Well, of course, I'm not going to do that. It's so funny that I'm just staring at your fucking shoulders and your chest and your head is cut off by Gorilla Tape right now. But yeah, I do think, you know, you did a good thing. And here's something I've learned in life as I've gotten older. Esteemable acts um, create esteem or something. Okay. I guess we'll just go right into hot topics then since we were already talking about Taylor Swift. You said Taylor Swift was swarmed at Jack's wedding and quote from Lizzie, this is not okay. So Jack Antonoff and Margaret Quayle, or Quayley, goof. You know, names aren't my thing, guys. <laughs> a lot of, th- I can do some things, not all things, and names is one of the things I can't do, like math. But Jack Antonoff and Margaret Quayley have been married. They got married this past weekend, and it became a wild fucking show. All, like, they got married in a small town in New Jersey, and all... Taylor Swift was there. Taylor Swift comes in with security hot and immediately the entire town swarms her. How, the how do they know she's town. there? Can somebody tell me how they know where yeah, this woman is at like all times? I think it took like two videos on TikTok that went viral because I saw it immediately. And Taylor Swift is so famous that I didn't even realize she was with Channing Tatum and Zoe Kravitz. To attend Jack Antonoff's wedding? Yeah, they're like friends, but I literally didn't even see Channing Tatum and Zoe Kravitz. I just saw Taylor, and it's like they're right there together. And then later on, I figure out she's with Cara Delvine also. They're all in the same group of walkers, and I didn't... Whatever. The whole town came out. The sheriffs had to come in because the town blocked off the entire street. There was at least, you know, a thousand people standing out there with their cameras screaming, Taylor, Taylor, chanting at the rehearsal dinner before she came out. And then the same is true for the wedding. And if you've seen Miss Americana, which is Taylor Swift's documentary, I believe it's on Netflix, she talks about how this kind of attention can become a little bit too much for her. So if you're a real Taylor Swift fan, you're not going to do that. I... If you're a real fan of humanity, you're not going to do that. Don't do that to fucking anyone. Yeah, like, I mean, we, just Justin Bieber like famously would like scream, "I'm not a zoo animal," and like, I yeah. it is too much. But it's in, and I'm not saying like it comes with what she does, but it's like inevitable. She's the most famous person on the planet right now. There's, no, yeah. I'm not saying it's right, but no, there's no foregoing uh, what comes with that, and. I, that's what it's like a, it's I always... an unavoidable price but i wish that people would people harder and and not uh strip the people they love of yeah. their humanity do that anywhere else like do that outside of her concerts do that where she's working do but not at somebody else's wedding and that's more than anything i bet taylor herself was just embarrassed even though she, like yeah. that's not it's not a for her to be embarrassed about but it's like this is somebody else's wedding and it's turned into a spectacle about me more than the love of them which i'm sure it was still special inside of there but it is like if i was taylor sitting inside of that wedding and i heard thousands of people chanting my name while somebody was giving their wedding vows i would want to die a little bit inside just like this is so embarrassing oh, it's, fucked. it's so um, fucked. but i so- just don't know how these people like so and okay a couple of things like is this bitch in a different state every day because a couple of days ago i saw she was getting dinner with ed sheeran and if you know anything all i wanted was ed sheeran to pop out on her fucking eras tour in los angeles they have time to go to dinner dinner together in new york city yeah i mean that's right by new jersey i know but why can't she oh so maybe that's why she was there but i'm just like does she not stay put anywhere because she has her house in los angeles she just finished her tour in los angeles she has 14 days off i counted why didn't she just stay put for a second isn't this woman tired i think her home base is probably new york i thought it was tennessee 
You think so? I thought, I mean, I thought, I don't, I, I'm not, I, I'm you the and person I are like questioning the, we're the how least people informed know where she with is. the strongest opinion on everything. <laughs> well, I do. I'm like, I need to know the antics of her life. Like, I'm so hoping we get a tour documentary because I want to know. Call the backup dancer. I, I'm so sick of this. We could get a glimpse. I don't think, I think he has a crazy NDA. Ask him. Okay. I will, because I do need to know the antics of this tour. I've been watching tour logistics on YouTube, not for Taylor specifically, but just like how it works and how it like sets up and breaks down and who travels in what way, who takes the private plane, who takes the tour, but like, you know what I'm talking about? Because yeah. it baffles my mind the the with the tour she's putting on at th how, with how large this tour is, like not only how she does it, but then how does she go to sleep? And then how does she do it again? How does she never get a headache or a stomach ache? How can she perform every single night? And like, what is the in and outs of her life? I need to know. I mean, I certainly don't, but you know who might? I, I'm so sick of you. The backup dancer. He can't talk. You don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> you are silencing this man before you even ask him. <laughs> Chris wants to know if your camera cuts out at 30 minutes. Of course it does. Of course it does, Chris. <laughs> in tandem with Taylor Swift being swarmed by these motherfuckers out in the streets of New Jersey, there's this woman, Ashley, who looks kind of like Taylor Swift after a shit ton of plastic surgery. And she has been out and about pretending to be Taylor Swift with a group of people who are making like a YouTube video about it. And she's got fake pop, uh, she's got fake, what you call it, security, following her around downtown Disney, following her around the Glendale Galleria. And she's literally letting fans swarm her as if she is Taylor Swift. And I wonder, I'm wondering if these are the same people. I didn't look too far into it, but somebody did a YouTube video where they like did this with a Justin Bieber lookalike back in the day. And it was like this whole involved thing where they like pulled stunts. It's kind of like that Nathan for you where they like, or is that Nathan for you where they pull like a big stunt and then tell the world that they created a viral moment after the fact, but it's not really going to work if TikTok no. has already discovered what they're doing before they post the video. And if we already know that Taylor Swift is in like these locations where people are like famously standing outside sharing her name it's also just weird right so what like it's creating a mob which is not safe and then on top of it it's you're fucking with people which is confusing and weird and you're just impersonating someone with with no goal with no objective other than creating a youtube video and I just, I don't know. I think it's fucking weird, especially because of the size of a mob that a Taylor Swift sighting can create. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. It's just weird. I'll have to watch so this, the video. I mean, I don't even know if I want to say where the video is. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really want to plug that. Well, video. you only put, I mean, do we even know if the video is live? You only put TikToks of these people. Yeah, I did. Oh. I did only put TikToks. So there's the full blown YouTube video out. So we can get the full context of like their. Yeah. But scope. she went. Yeah, but this girl Ashley went on her TikTok like today and made a whole story about it where she was like, listen, it's a social experiment. It was a prank. I told everyone, it's Ashley, it's Ashley. But it's like, well, it's weird, Ashley. It's fucking weird. I mean, if she's an actress and they paid her a good enough amount of money, if I was 20 and when I looked like Justin Bieber and somebody offered me to do it, I'd probably be like, fine. Like, it's interesting. Right. I mean, who cares, really? Like... I just, I, I get the who cares, but it's also like if you see the mob that this girl is creating in public, it's like, it's weird. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. To, like, it's an interesting play on humanity that like you can like at the thought of a person's presence create this energy that is everyone losing their minds. And then it's yeah. not even that person. I understand it's like a weird and like, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't produce that as my adult self. I think it's weird, but I mean, I might click on the video. I saw the top comment on the TikTok was like, what if Taylor just pulls this is Ashley moving forward? And then they're like, oh, so I don't know. And then apparently she wasn't even the first pick. And then the first pick made a TikTok video, which to me made it just as bad as what the other girl was doing. And we're going to run out of time.
pie. Yeah. Today's podcast is sponsored by one of my favorite apps that just so happens to be SeatGeek. You know, I've been to Taylor Swift not once, not twice, but three times. And every time it was because of SeatGeek. They gifted me tickets once and I bought two other tickets on SeatGeek because I'm such a huge fan. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, festivals, sports, and more. And with artists like Taylor Swift, the Jonas Brothers, Big Time Rush, Drake, and Beyonce all on tour, you are not going to want to miss out. The reason I love SeatGeek is because they put all the tickets from across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a great deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10, so look for the green dots. Green means good, red means bad, and every single ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And I can vouch for SeatGeek the one time that my tickets did not come through, I was refunded and I got other tickets to, of course, go see Taylor Swift, which changed my life. And you know SeatGeek came through for all of you guys. You can use our code SIP, S-I-P, for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code SIP. And make sure you click the link in the description section below to download their fantastic app. SeatGeek, I love you so much. Thank you for sponsoring this podcast. Today's podcast is also sponsored by HelloFresh. And with HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You skip those daunting trips to the grocery store and you can count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's always America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh keeps your taste buds on their toes with 40 chef-crafted recipes to select from every single week. From family-friendly to fit and wholesome, you'll always find new and exciting recipes to try and love. And you can also add snacks and sides and even more to your weekly HelloFresh order. Just simply shop HelloFresh Market and take your pick from a curated selection of over 100 add-on items. HelloFresh is 25% cheaper than takeout and even less expensive than grocery shopping. Plus, it takes one more thing off your to-do list. You can walk downstairs and know that there's something ready to be made for you. I personally love the meals that can be ready in just 15 minutes. I walk down there and I know I can have a home-cooked meal without feeling like I've overworked or spent my entire day on dinner. I love, love, love HelloFresh and I'm constantly using it. So go to HelloFresh.com slash 50 the sip and use code 50 the sip for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50 the sip and use code 50 the sip for 50% off plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Um... So then the one that was their first pick made a TikTok video well, talking about how there's... she was the first pick, but she turned it down because it was weird. And then I'm like, but you're being just as bad telling the world and being I don't just think as opportunistic. she's being just as bad telling the world that. So just for a little bit of context, there's another girl who's also a Taylor Swift lookalike. And she went viral recently because she got a picture with Drake and posted it or something so it looks like drake and taylor swift are hanging out but apparently this youtube guy hit her up to be fake taylor first for this youtube video and she, when she realized what it was she decided it was weird and decided not to do it so she went on her tiktok and said you know i was picked first i think this is kind of weird and i don't think people should be swarming taylor swift i think it's just as weird to make a tiktok and still get the attention about saying that you said no like to me i think that's worse <laughs> then just... going out in public and pretending you're her then driving to anaheim walking around downtown disney not even going into disneyland not even getting a disneyland ticket just going to downtown disney yeah because walking she's her up and down the street instead and then... she wants the attention herself for being picked to do this thing exploiting what it would have been for attention like she's doing the same thing she's doing the exact same thing and maybe on a larger scale because more people might see that tiktok than we'll see this person that was actually doing it in person that's my hot take okay okay oh you know what we never broke down how you and your fucking husband make out like high schoolers this we is never so broke wild down that you don't kiss your husband i do which kiss is even my wilder. husband but Prove it's like it. i've never seen you kiss I've never seen you and Joe make out. No, you were talking about having just like a passionate make out session. Like it was noon or something. And we were talking on the phone and you were like, yeah, earlier me and Joe, when we were making out, like something yeah, happened I afterwards. Yeah, I like making out with my husband. And I was if like, you, don't make you guys just have make out sessions? Chris, do you make out ends? with your man? No, but it just ends. Like you guys are just making out. Like high schoolers. Yeah. This is what I would do yeah. in high school. We'd like go to the basement and just make out. When yeah. Shane and I make out, it normally ends in us having sex. 
So you never just like kiss, make out, wouldn't, walk away. Do I mean, you, you don't have a dick, but then wouldn't you be hard and want to fuck? I mean, he gets hard, but we both have jobs, baby. But I got to lay on the floor in the kitchen. <laughs> He's got to go play games on his computer. We can't fuck all the time. So you just make out like high schoolers and then he's yeah. hard and probably like needs to get it out of him. Or yeah. is he going or you're going to work on the kitchen floor and he's going to finish in the other room? Probably. It's not my business what he does on his own time. Okay. Okay, I just thought that was crazy. No, it's sweet. Like, the sentiment is sweet that you guys just, like, make out at 11 a.m. I love him. Wow. I love his breath. I like to do this thing where I, like, shove him up against the wall and I treat him like he's a little, a little, little pass around patty slut. I don't know. I like don't it's know a grinder it. hookup? Like, I just like to be like, can you come over here and talk for a second? Like, he's in trouble. And then he meets me in a dark corner of the house. And I just shove him up against the wall and kiss him. And then I say, okay, bye. Wow, maybe you should have an OnlyFans. I'm getting kind of, like, hot and steamy. <gasps> for straight stuff? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I'm basically straight. That's how it happens. <laughs> okay. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> um, you put in a headline. Celebrities wearing visible underwear. And you said, I fucking hope not. No, invisible underwear. No. Uh -uh. Yes, visible underwear. You're right. Okay, this is a new trend. We've talked about it before. We're going to talk about it again. The hot topics are lacking. That's not my fault. All anybody's talking about is this Bobby Drake drama that doesn't make any fucking sense to me, so I can't bring it to Wait, the pod. Wait, what is that? I thought that that was... I thought the Drake headline was the girl that got spotted with Drake that was Taylor Swift but isn't Taylor Swift. No, that's not the Drake headline. So what's I didn't Bobby put it Drake? in because it's, it makes no sense no, to me. You did put There's it in this... with no link. With no link. It says Bobby Drake drama. Because there is no link. What is it? There's a million links. Because none of the links add up to anything. And if there's one thing I know, it's that six plus seven does not equal 11. <laughs> and that is why I did not want to talk about the Drake Bobby drama here today. <laughs> is it math related? <laughs> it feels math related. <laughs> what is it? Tell me. Okay, so there's this bitch named Bobby, right? And she's got a TikTok. And on her TikTok, she does weird shit like shows that one of her titties is really big and the other's really small because she's breastfeeding and one's full of milk. And she pretends that she has a daughter named Richard and a daughter named Concrete, but she never shows their faces. She's sh super sarcastic, really dry. And she does this bit where she's just like, I don't care. Like, I'm not happy to be here. Like, I think you're stupid. I think this is stupid. We're all stupid. Doing stupid stuff. This is stupid. Oh, is this the girl that has the podcast that they sat yes. in the bed in her this is like yes. a month old. No, it's not because something happened. Oh, okay. So after Drake did the podcast, they like followed each other on Instagram. She went on this press tour, like lauding Drake for being like her fairy internet godfather. And then out of the blue, that podcast was pulled off her page and she and Drake no longer follow each other. What? Yeah. So that's what everyone said. They were like, what? And then this, she. I mean, um, it's a pretty good publicity stunt. Because like it has me But interested. it's not because she pulled the video off YouTube. So she's no longer pulling in revenue from it. So and it was her best performing video. Then doesn't her. I mean, doesn't she make a million short form videos from all of her things too, though? I honestly don't know because it's not for me. Like I just I don't <laughs> I, get it. No, I haven't. I only when I was like scrolling on Instagram, that is how I saw who that girl was. And then somebody yeah. I was with was talking about it. And I was like, oh, I saw like a short form video about that. And then this is how I'm aware. Yeah, I mean, and that's exactly how I'm aware as well. It's just always on my For You page. And then she had done an episode of the BFFs podcast and Dave Portnoy slid into her DMs because everybody was saying that she her marriage is over because of Drake. She hooked up with Drake, lost her marriage, and that's why she deleted him uh, the podcast with him and that's why she deleted all of her content with him so Dave Portnoy who is a ballsy bitch slid into her DMs and was like is this true and then she responded to him but said it's off the record so then BFF podcast posted a redacted version of that conversation where they bleep out what her response was so it seemed hella nefarious mm. but the truth is because Bobby then starts getting all this heat where it's like they think that the bleeping out is confirmation that she did fuck Drake so then she goes on to her fucking Instagram page and she says I did not fuck Drake the redacted part of that conversation was I told him he 
I did not fuck Drake. She posts the conversation with Dave Portnoy. And then we're back to square one of still not understanding why this whole fucking thing was deleted. And now people are speculating that Drake did this intentionally to fuck Bobby over professionally because he's not a dummy, I guess. And he played a Tyga song on the podcast that was like Rack City or something, which I think he owns the rights to. So he played it in the podcast. He is the one who edited the podcast that she aired, left what? the song in the podcast, then made a copyright claim on the podcast, which is why Bobby deleted the video or unlisted the video so that she doesn't have to pay him any more royalties from the posting of it. And at that point, the two of them unfollowed each other. But everyone keeps saying that, like, that makes sense. But for, I'm like a motive bitch. And it's like, what's Drake's motive to be an asshole to some mom on TikTok? And so Drake was the one that has, I have heard of this, of like these huge music musicians having uh, creative control over the shows that they go on and they'll even like edit it themselves like I heard yeah. an A-list pop star like a female pop star that's like at the top 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 um goes on this famous show and she like gets the footage she sits there and edits it and sends it back and the person just has to post it as is even if there's yeah. rough cuts or it looks whatever and it's just yeah. like if you interview this person they have that's the way it goes yeah and so allegedly that's Drake as well well, I don't know if that's Drake as well, but Drake was like, I want to help you. Like he had seen her do one of these podcasts before and was like, let me help you. I'll give you all the shit that you can post. Like, here's a crash course in virability. And she, he, she like went on all these podcasts and was like, I'm so grateful for Drake because nobody told me how to do anything. And then he came along and then he helped me. And now everyone's saying what I just told you. And he's as like, if it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. And more than like a musician, he's a, he's knowledgeable in virability. I guess so. I, if he's I, like such just, a popular I just artist. Don't, right. I just don't know why he would go out of his way to fuck this girl over. It just doesn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? Hmm. Maybe right? even like, if they didn't fuck, there was st it still caused tension between her and her. I mean, it would be, I guess, hard if you were like with a female that is all of a sudden like having these intimate conversations that turn into real relationships with powerful, beautiful people. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Even if nothing happened. Yes. I'm saying like maybe the jealousy takes course even if something sexually didn't happen and this is her way of still like deleting it being like well even though this oh, is like the highlight of my career i'm willing yeah, to take but, this down for you but no matter what it is public knowledge because of like on the public record that drake is the one who filed the copyright claim to fuck her video oh so he has it out for her that's what i'm saying and that's what doesn't make any sense like why i mean he must not like weird that's what I'm saying. And everyone keeps giving all these details as if it adds up to something, but I'm like, so something must no. have something that spawned out of this must have hit him the wrong way. Yeah. I, I don't know. Cause he's pissed. Wow. He has a vengeance. Weird, right? Yeah. But that's why I didn't put it in here because it's like, this is an unsolved mystery. I mean, that was interesting for me cause I'm not in on TikTok, So I don't know if everybody else that listens to this podcast is already hip to all that knowledge, but that was all new information for me. I honestly feel like the audience is going to be like, this is when, like, when Lizzie said that six plus seven equals 11, she got it all wrong. Oh, that's where your math came in. It all came full circle. Yep. Okay, so the underwear with, okay, you don't like the underwear trend where you can see celebrities' underwear and you hate that it's a thing and that all these celebrities are doing it. I, yeah, I mean, we've done this. We've tried it and we failed at it. I'm in and out of this. So, like, if you're wearing a thong and I can see it, Fine. If you're wearing low-waisted pants and you're pulling the thong up, gives me the ick. It's like clear-cut boundaries for me. Right. Like pulling it's like a the bob panties, and a fuck-ass bob. Yes. Pulling the panties up, no, 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 no. Wearing a sheer dress where I can see your thong, yes, 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 yes. Oh, shit. Okay. So I have like caveats to this one. I don't know that I do. I want to <laughs> go back to a world in which my clothes aren't see-through. Well, we know you're prude. So, except for when you push your husband against the wall, you have very weird boundaries with like you don't know me. how you don't you're know prude and how me. you're not prude. You just wish your husband would back your ass up against a wall and kiss you passionately. You don't know that he doesn't. I'm just I mean, saying, I do because you basically just said no, you don't. I do. No, I said it leads to kiss. sex. <laughs> we, it's very rare that we're just making out and sex doesn't happen. Wow. Wow. Crazy. Okay. <laughs> You said, I want to get behind this sentiment. I'm tripping on getting Botox before I get pregnant. But also, like, what if I just stop trying to look 26 years old? 
So Charlize Theron was recently like people are like, she got a facelift. She did a bunch of shit to herself. She's like, you guys, I didn't get a fucking facelift. I'm just getting older. My face is changing. Faces fucking change. And that's dope. But isn't a facelift a quote unquote compliment? Well, that's what I think. And also they're trying to say that the location of her facial features has shifted. And that's what's validating their opinion that she has a facelift. So they're saying it's... Oh, wait. But this doesn't make sense for Charlize's rebuttal. Because if you're saying you got a facelift, it would most likely be up and more snatched. And if she's saying, like, no, I got older, it would be, like, droopier and look... Like, me saying, oh, Lizzie, it looks like you got a facelift. That's saying, like, your skin and face looks tight and right. Thank you. And her saying, no, I'm getting old, is implying I don't look as tight and as right as I once did. I think it's a little bit like... They're, they're not saying it in a nice way. They're saying it like the way that they said it when Renee Zellweger resurfaced with a totally new so face. So she got a botch job. To some de- I think they're saying something nasty like that. And her rebuttal is, I'm not. I'm just, my face is changing because I'm evolving as a person who's growing older. And I wish that, like, I feel like I personally spend so much time looking at pictures of myself in my prime, wondering how to get back there. But it's like, if I just treat every chapter like my prime... Like, why don't I just do that? But also, um, five, in every present moment, I fucking hate myself and I hate my body and I hate my face. And I spend all this fucking time in the present hating myself. And then I look back on these pictures and I'm like, what was that about? Yes, I agree. And even like right now, everyone's today. We're all always yeah. going to look back and be like, damn, you were yeah. like killing it. And if we could just get past feeling like we're not looking great, the things that we could accomplish taking could away imagine? that. And the it's time like, wasted hating ourselves. I don't know we that. Save the world. I don't know that anyone doesn't deal with being like, wow, I used to be so much prettier. I used to whatever. And it's like, if we could just get past that. And that actually kind of hits on what was, oh, I think it was, oh, it's an advice though question that's coming up. Um, We'll get to it. We'll touch on it when we circle back to that. Oh. But yeah, I do think. (laughs) Do you want me to go to it right now? Yeah. Okay. My boyfriend and I have been together for four years, and when we first started dating, he was ripped in all caps. I mean, a full set of abs, and I was head over heels because I like my men muscular and fit. However, now that we've been dating a long time and he is starting to gain an excess amount of weight, I still love him very much, but unfortunately, I've lost my attraction for him because of the weight gain. Please help me on what to do because I love him more than anything, and I couldn't imagine myself without him, but... I do wish he would start working on himself again. And although this isn't the same as like the Charlize thing, I do think it is playing on our looks, our attractions to people and how that plays a part in our day-to-day relationship. So like, first of all, for this woman, it, it would be challenging if you like, if your thing, if what got you off was like a ripped man and that has since changed. But at the end of the day, like, all of us are going to change and evolve and our looks aren't going to be what they once were, especially as we ride off into the sunset with somebody. Like I was watching, this is so like a weird tangent, but I was watching this Rock Hudson documentary and he was like the it boy of his generation. Um, And then they were now talking to people that like were in cahoots with him back in the day that are now in their 80s. And they're showing pictures of these people that are 80 when they were like my age and like ripped and rock solid and all of them like they don't have those looks anymore and that's just Mm -hmm. life so i think we do have to come to terms with like how we look we can't always chase our youth um Mm -hmm. but i just thought it was like an interesting tie-in to like to to the standard that we put on looks and to the pressure we put on ourselves to be and feel and look a certain way in society yeah i mean Yeah, I I agree with you. I don't think I even have anything to add. I just, you know, I love Joe so much that his breath is what I'm attracted to. You're wild. Like, I just could huff that breath all day. So what would you tell, what would you tell this woman, though, that is struggling? I mean, you can't take this away from her that, like, if that's her thing. No, I mean, I definitely can't because I'm also attracted to how Joe looks. But Joe also looks way different than when I met him. And I've been attracted to him all the way through. Right. Um... But it's because, like, like I said, like I like his, I could huff his fucking breath. I love his breath. I love his eyes. I just look at his face and I swoon. And I don't know if that's because he's actually attractive or if because I'm just madly in love with him. 
<laughs> well, and that's even what, though I do know he is wildly attractive. It does um, baffle me, like sexuality and sexual attraction in general. Like how much of it is physical versus how much you're in love with somebody it, after you fall in love with somebody. Is it different? Obviously, this woman is struggling with I love this person so much, but it isn't what it once was. Mm-hmm. I I'm almost curious is. Uh, your sex life affected by his weight gain or him gaining weight? Like, is he feeling less confident and not giving you um, the same passionate Dicking or down. yes. Is that a bigger factor than like the looks itself? Maybe he's feeling a little more insecure since he's gained weight and that has altered your relationship more than the physical aspect of it. I would, yeah. I don't think it's awful to have a conversation, not it, by any means being like, Uh, you're not what you once were and I'm not attracted to you like I once was, but like, are we making healthy, like in an organic way, figuring out how to have a conversation about, are we being the healthiest versions of ourselves or is like, you know, and that's a difficult conversation to have. I don't know how you enter that conversation, but I think if you love this man, you got to figure it out. And I think if you were to start dating another ripped man in 20 years, he's not going to be a ripped man. You know, yeah. unless I also you're wonder always... how old you the you guys are. Like, is this a young love? Because sometimes it's not that you're it's not that you don't love this person. You can totally love a person, but being in love and loving a person and loving your life with that person is totally different than being like in love with someone. Do you know what I mean? Sexually charged too. Yeah, because like not to be weird, but like I love you and I could love my life with you, but I'm not sexually in love with you right i did see like even on the vlog (laughs) on the vlog people were like in another life they were soulmates and lived their life out together i'm (laughs) like well in a weird way we do live our lives out together it's just (laughs) not romantically like it's just gay everything we're not (laughs) everything that like we don't get fulfillment from in our relationships, which isn't even like non-fulfillment. It's just like no, it's the just... psycho portion of us that like <laughs> wants to go get sick at amusement parks where maybe yeah. like our partners, that's not their thing. That's Thank God thing. we have each other to go be stupid yeah. and silly with. But, the, but, and, and that's what I mean. Like you can love a person, but not be in love with them. And sometimes I think if it's so, if your arousal is so tied to what they actually look like, it might be a different form of love. And that doesn't, that's not something bad. This might just be a discovery that you guys haven't found the right person yet. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. I guess you have to ask yourself what's most important to you in the relationship, like, and be really serious with yourself. Are you actually in love with this person? Like, does he get your heart racing? Are you still after four years, you've been together for four years. Is it really the physical element only, or is the relationship starting to dwindle and you haven't yet admitted it to yourself? Yeah. And this is like the easier facade of like well this is why it isn't what it once was but I think you owe it to yourself to ask yourself the hard questions and then have a conversation with him about it I don't think you need to like attack his looks but I think in a loving way you should get to the bottom of what the real issue is yeah and if it's something sexually that he can't provide for you but you guys are both in love with each other like open relationships work for some people where they go get their sex and they're with their people. It's not my thing, but pegging isn't my thing either. And apparently it's everyone else's. (laughs) It's everyone else's. Okay. We've got, well, we never did our, uh, welcome back to advice that we can't do it. It's virtual. I literally, I'm sorry. I would have picked up on the cue, but I actually can't see your head. Oh, right. We got a follow up. (laughs) This is less of advice though. And more of a follow up. So, a few episodes back, we got a submission about a straight woman in a straight relationship. Or was her boyfriend maybe her, bi? I believe but her has boyfriend never acted on it. I think he was admittedly bi and had acted on it, and she knows because she read his grinder app or something. And that comes back up. But they're in a relationship, and he's requested that she pegs him. She wasn't necessarily. He requested it. Yes. Oh, wait, hold on. How are you giving this update? Are you reading word for word what she said? Okay, let me read her follow-up. Okay. 
Don't summarize anything. I want it all straight through. I know, but I probably should have recapped the first time this happened. Okay, so I watched the episode as soon as it came out, and I tried to have a talk with my boyfriend today. First of all, big props to Lizzie, but I'm really not into pegging and don't see it as something I can do. And Just for the record, I'm not a pegger. I realize how that whole episode sounded. It's like, I honestly do have a friend that pegs. I'm not the pegger. It's not just like, I have a friend. It's like, I'm not, I'm not a pegger. And it, that's no judgment against a pegger. Like, I just, I think I would love to peg, but I'm not uh, in, but in you have the to position admit, to peg. It, it is a different, um, it's a, it, it creates a different dynamic because it yeah. is like, if we're putting it on a gay relationship, that's making the bottom the top. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Second, I really appreciate Ryland's perspective because that's exactly how I feel. I don't want to deprive him at all. Anyway, about our talk today, I didn't open up entirely because it happened quite organically. He showed me an article online that said all straight guys should try anal sex because it just feels good. And I asked him if it was something he'd like to try with or without me. And he said, no, you're more than enough for me. So hopefully he's as monogamous as Shane and that's that. However, I'm scared because he still has the grind app on his phone and I don't know if he's still logging on to it and talking to people on it I also know it was wrong to look on his phone and I don't necessarily want to admit it but thank you for giving me advice so quickly I didn't expect a turnaround so soon so he's now kind of walked back and said he is fine with their relationship but she knows that the grinder app is still on his phone if you're not yeah. ready to confront him about his grinder app i think you have no other choice than to look and see if he's active oh i think you're crazy what do you mean i i don't ever think it's a good idea to just go through someone's phone i've never gone through shane's phone and i don't even have his phone password but you either need to ask him point blank yeah. Or you need to be okay with, but she knows it he has grinder there. on his phone. She's already looked once and she knows it's there. And yeah, so I, how could you I, swallow the fact knowing that he might be, I don't know. I, I couldn't set I up swallow my future nothing, with someone. First of all, I, uh, if I were her, I would ask. And so I was in a similar situation, right? I'm hanging out with Joe. He gets a text message from his guy friends. We're like laying in bed together. I can see the screen. And I see on the screen an image that I don't like. I see an image that, quite frankly, makes me sick to my stomach. And I was like, what is that? And he was like, honestly, I don't know. I just got it's in a group chat with a bunch of guys. And he just sent me these pictures. He's like, we can look through the pictures together. And I said, I would like to do that. So he scrolls through them. And to be completely honest, they just get more and more upsetting and more disturbing for me. And he just said, you know, I'm so sorry. I, there's no way I could have anticipated this coming on the flow of this conversation because they were talking about like real estate or something completely unrelated. And then all of a sudden, it's just a bunch of shit that if you see it out of context as a woman in a committed relationship, it'll make your stomach turn. But if I had pretended like I didn't see it and then tried to snoop through his phone later and sat on it and waited, the anxiety and resentment that would build inside me would burn my fucking house down and I would be inside it. But here's the would, thing. She was the one. It wasn't a, a discovery of them together. She had looked know, previously and saw the grinder app. And so I now, think that there's an easy way to do it, though. You just say, hey, I noticed you still have the grinder app on your phone. You don't have to qualify that. Right. I noticed you still have the grinder app on your phone. I, I just want to know what's up with that, because to be honest, it made me feel uncomfortable in my stomach. And, and you don't even have to make it emotional. So like what I did is I just said, I am not mad at you. I understand that these are messages that you received unsolicited and I'm not mad at you and I'm not trying to fight with you. But I want you to understand that images like that on your phone and the fact that your friends are so comfortable sending them makes me hurt inside so if you can just be like it, it makes my stomach turn if you can just say hey i noticed that you have the grinder app on your phone it's uh provoking a lot of questions in my mind i'm kind of spiraling about it and i would just like to know uh what's up with that you owe it to yourself to have this hard conversation with this man you're in a relationship with because you cannot go forth in building a future with this man if in three years, he's going to then be like, I have been talking to guys and I do need to be with a guy. I need I need to discover this side of myself. And that's fine if he does need to do that, but you just need to set him free sooner rather than later if that's going to be his reality. And I know that's hard to put on somebody like, hey, man, you need to decide if you need to explore right now 
or not, because it's like your relationship is probably sacred and there's probably a lot of great things about it, but it's just not worth like building your future with somebody you can't be sure about, especially if they're telling you they don't need to be fulfilled by a guy, but they have grinder on their phone. Yeah. I think the most powerful part of what you said is don't rob yourself of that time because you're afraid to have a hard conversation have the conversation sis it's gonna be okay and i agree with you lizzie i don't ever think looking in somebody's phone is the way to go i think uh especially if you want a healthy relationship with this person you need to be point blank and ask him straight to his face because if you can't trust each other that's a sign to me that the relationship is also not going somewhere yeah like and and to be completely honest like i never have felt like oh my man's is doing something that would break me Right. But I also don't like uh, other people doing weird shit that, to be honest, is disrespectful to my marriage. Well, yeah, because who you associate with is a big deal, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I'm a threat to your marriage, quite frankly. Shh. <laughs> I'm trying to go to Disneyland when you get back here. <laughs> We've got to go for the holidays. I was watching uh, The Electrics. They came on Shane's podcast. He's the guy that does all of the crazy food challenges. They okay. went during Christmas and they have holiday flavored Dole Whip. They have holiday flavored cookies and like meals at all the different restaurants. So I almost want to go to like the Disneyland park and yeah. get all of their Christmas themed foods and just walk through the Christmas magic, especially as like one last, not that it's a last two rocks. I'm so excited for my babies to be born, but it's like, yeah. it will be our experience going to theme parks will be different after the kids come. It will still be fun, but it will be different. It'll be different for sure. But I'm definitely, I'm absolutely down to do that. And I will just sit out on the violent rides because as we know, I am pregnant. Right. And that's how we're speaking uh, <laughs> until we hear different, which we won't because we're Your manifesting poor family that you is going to be like, are you pregnant? I'm like, em em emotionally, yeah. I mean, they know you. They, like even your no. poor friends, you're just screaming at them, you're pregnant. We like don't know Lizzie's pregnant, but we know Lizzie's pregnant. You know what I mean? Like all, I was on the phone with my friend Jessica and I was like, well, I mean like, and it's like, I'm pregnant. And she was like, oh my God, what? Are you pregnant? I was like, I mean- Mentally, yeah. Like, you can't prove I'm not pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't understand. I was like, I'm pregnant. Uh, and we all know it. Get with the program. We've all, everybody knows Get it. Get with the fucking program. Don't be a fucking idiot. Even Chris. I was like, sorry for being short. I am pregnant. And he's like, what? <laughs> I was like, come on, Chris. And that's why at the beginning of this episode, I'm just so blurting it out because it's so like, and I know that's, it's very different, like personal relationships versus the internet, but it is so funny how you just scream at everyone. You're pregnant with like no preface. It's just, I'm it's pregnant. also the way I talk to actually pregnant people. And it's like, that's probably disrespectful. <laughs> But I am actually pregnant, so I don't think it's a problem. I agree. Um, so you. to round oh. out this episode, I never knew that there was such a large pegging community. And I'm so glad to have since been educated since that first submission. We got Honestly, same. maybe 25 emails uh, talking in depth about um, people pegging inside of their relationships. So I just wanted Hell to yeah, share ladies. a few of their stories with you. Um, one woman said on the subject of straight men and pegging, my husband is straight and enjoys being pegged and will even use a friend during his alone time. When we typically have whoa, whoa, whoa. sex, what you need to break that down. Is that a dildo or a buddy? Um, I, she, I think she means a sex toy. Okay. Yes. Really uh, weird choice of word for a sex toy. I mean, it's in quotes in the email. Okay. It, it makes sense when you're reading the email, um, okay. which I think maybe people are just a lot more sexually adventurous than me. Like I enjoy sex and we have great sex, but I'm not like fiending for sex outside of my sex and thinking about how I can make sex better at all hours of the day. Right. But maybe I'm just not as sexual as some of these people. Um, this woman says, when we typically have sex, he is the dominant one, but every now and then he will want to bottom. He's never had interest in men sexually. He's just open to new things in the bedroom. Just thought I'd shine light on the situation. Hope this helps answer some questions love you guys in the podcast say hi to shane and chris for me so i do i don't think every man that wants to be pegged is gay by any means like they have a prostate it's gotta feel good right. um 
I just find it interesting to have more stories of straight relationships. This other Yeah, I don't think there's anything like I don't think gay people or straight people own an orgasm. And I don't think butt coming is necessarily gay. And it's just for I people don't, with a prostate, right? Yeah. I don't know if I'd define it as butt coming. I would say right, like Right, but you know I'm confused by the whole thing. Hitting Oh my gosh. I just uh, here's the deal. <laughs> do you do we need to break this down for you here and now, Elizabeth? Lizzie was asking me. So, like, if a man has a butt orgasm, does that equal coming through your dick? Like, is the butt orgasm your cum reflex? And I yeah. was like, no, it will help you get there. But honestly, they're very different. Like, you could have an orgasm. And just from to be clear, butt. I'm asking if you butt nut, do you ejaculate from your penis? But butt nutting <laughs> isn't. Like, you don't, only shit is created from your asshole. Like, you're not creating. I don't think you ejaculate out your asshole. I think you ejaculate out your dick when you butt nut. Just for the record. Uh, okay. And no. That's, that's what I'm envisioning. I don't think you're skeeting out your asshole. Unless, that's not what I thought. Unless, like, <laughs> I'm completely different than every other guy in the world, which I don't think I am. That One is not the same. Let me ask Chris. Okay, ask him, but. Chris, when you butt nut, do you come out your dick? Chris comes out his dick when he butt nuts. Every single time. Well, Every single time. Where else would you? No, 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 no. I'm just saying they're different. He just said, this... "Where else would you?" So I am right. No, no, you're not. There's no other place to come from. Do yeah, you but, hear him? But this, okay. Uh, it's very nuanced. Like I need to. Chris can't hear because there's uh, we're on iPhones. It's, Chris, come over here and put this headphone in. It's very oh. complicated. I'm. He's coming. Okay. Thank God. I don't know where right he's coming now, from. Is that Probably not out of butthole. <laughs> here get close okay are you there christopher <laughs> hello are you can you hear him yeah but i can't see him but that's fine as long as you guys can see him yeah okay chris but just because you orgasm in your butt that doesn't automatically equal come through your dick like obviously once you get to the point of ejaculating you'll ejaculate or are you yeah, saying we... you you orgasm from your butt and that equals come out your dick well you can't orgasm like if we're orgasming, you're orgasming. We don't have like, as, I mean. No, I think your prostate can be, I guess. Okay. Like you can stimulate the prostate. It can feel great, but that's not an orgasm. An orgasm is when you come. No? Am I wrong? <laughs> I mean, you've never been like anally. This is very graphic. Um, you can, there are guys that can anally please themselves to the point where they like. Where come they come. Free, but they're still coming out their dick. I agree with you. I'm just saying, I think. Hmm. So I'm right. So you butt nut out your dick. I don't, but I guess for me, one doesn't equal two. You know what I mean? Like I can be like, I think they can be a little bit different. Like I can be anally stimulated in a way that's like, I've had enough and that has like peaked without coming. Oh, I see. But yeah, I, I guess mean, Chris is saying like orgasm technically means for a man ejaculating. Yeah, I think I see what you're saying. I think you're still right. Like, there's still, it's a different, like, good feeling you get. And I think the there can be sometimes one more than the other. Like, you could come first, or you could be more, like, anally stimulated, or there's, like, an anally stimulated cum versus, like, a cum cum. It's very hard to explain. I see what you're saying. And you can come while there's something in your butt, and then you get that feeling from coming in your dick also in your butt at the same time, and it's, like, double times. It's crazy. But at, no, <laughs> but at no point are you ejaculating out of your anus. Never. <laughs> Unless you're you shitting say. out somebody else's cum. <laughs> and that's on cucking. Oh my gosh, my battery's going to die. My battery's going to die. Oh, should we, do we have to sign off? Um, uh, Let's sign off in case. But then I did want to just follow up on... So another woman said, I'm bisexual. Oh my gosh, we're going to... Oh, this is sucks. Should we just Let sign me off? see if I can... Hold on. Let me see if I can plug this in. Oh, we're edging. Oh, shit. This is oh like god. Die. This is like butt coming. <laughs> Chris? I think I saved it. He thinks he saved the battery. Oh, His battery was dying. We're in the charger. He's been trying to gaslight me and tell me the guys that don't butt nut. What? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Um, this other girl said, I'm a bisexual woman and my boyfriend of five years is straight, but he asked me to peg him. So he, we have been doing this for three years now. And I think it is just because he enjoys the filling. I have had thoughts of him maybe liking men, but that wouldn't bother me. And at all. And we have talked about, uh, talked about sexual 
and we have talked about sexuality before, so I guess some men just like it in the butt. Another person says, I have a very active sexual relationship and he loves to be pegged. I've always been into sex, so when he introduced the topic three or four years ago, I was a little hesitant because I hadn't seen or heard of it before in straight men, but when I looked up more videos, read more uh, forums and other uh, about other girls who peg in straight relationships and straight men who like to be pegged. It's actually very normal and I don't think it's gay. So I love Yeah, that- I don't think coming is gay or straight. I think a, a, a fucking cum is a cum, bro. And I don't think we have to put everything into a box. Just because no. one thing is one way doesn't mean you're definitively any way. And society, I think, has tried to make it very much like you're gay or you're straight. You're this or you're yeah. that. You're whatever. And you can just be all things. I think you just have to make sure whatever that thing is works for you and your relationship. Like, if I had a... If I was a man in a straight relationship that liked to be pegged, I would just want to make sure that that didn't mean I needed another person outside of my relationship if I was monogamous. Yeah. All right. Well, Well, cover that. that. (laughs) I just also need to let you know that the second Chris got behind the camera, he held up a little note on his phone for me that said, from his perspective, I was right about butt coming. Okay. I mean, maybe, I guess an orgasm technically is coming. So maybe when you orgasm, you come. I guess I can be anally stimulated without Some say coming. you come harder than the next guy. All right. And you know what? What a blessing. Maybe you understand gay sex more than me. Honestly, it checks out as a woman who wants to drive a RAV4. All right, you guys. Well, I hope you liked this virtual episode of The Sip. We'll be back next week in person. The week after that, we'll do a fun drive through. Um, let us know what places you'd like us to try. If there's any uh, like seasonal thing coming out. I know fall I season. I think there's all the pumpkin spice stuff, bro. I know that is upon us. And next I've, week. I don't think I've tried all the pumpkin spice stuff. Like ever in your life? Like ever in my life, dude. That's wild. I know. Okay, well, we'll figure it out. You can leave your comments and suggestions on what you'd like us to try because we're not filming that for a week. Um, But thank you so much for watching and and supporting while our podcast, I Glitched. Uh, Make sure you watch all of our vlog channels and follow us all on Instagram. We love you so much and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. And that's that's the the sip. sip. (sighs) I said it in a normal way and then he did it. Who? You. I'm telling Chris why I sounded like I glitched. Well, no, you always try to do a weird pause thing to try to match me, but it's like if we just did it at the same time, it would be more fine. You, look, you just go and I'll just go. And don't I, worry about I it. I don't okay? even want to play this game. I think I what's done is game. done. Should we harmonize? Uh, nope. Uh, uh, cutting. Sounds bad. Cutting. <laughs> cutting. 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 <laughs>